There are many useful videos on improving sight reading skills, of course, but nevertheless, I wanted to share with you my perspective on this, because not only I will share with you easy to follow and well structured tips how to improve your sight reading, but also I will share with you a very valuable resource for late beginner and intermediate pianists, which will help you build the foundational skill for sight reading. Once I played an entry exam to a conservatory and they had a sight reading test. And I got this piece by Greek, which I haven't played before. So it sounds like this. <laughs> It's a lovely piece, of course, although a little bit challenging because it has a lot of chromatics and that's a perfect piece to test somebody's ability to sight read. And of course, you were not allowed to touch the keyboard before you play because this is a sight reading test, but they allowed you to look at it for a bit. So when uh, you find yourself in such a situation, the most important is to forbid yourself of panicking because it doesn't help, of course. Instead, you just follow the fake it till you make it rule. So just go through no matter what. <laughs> and sight reading is very much about how good you are at analyzing the score without playing it. So I stared at the piece for more than a minute actually, imagining my head everything, like every passage, and scanning the chords, just r recognizing the harmonies. By that time, luckily, I had a habit of practicing without actually playing, so I was just visualizing my fingers and uh, the key, so it wasn't difficult. As some of you already know, one of the key points in sight reading is to recognize chords, because most Western classical music is just a melody, and elaborated chords. So from the sight reading perspective, it's not that important to play this passage perfectly, although this is just a chromatic scale, it's not that difficult, but it's much more important to recognize that you start from this diminished chord and then you have a A major pattern on the fourth beat and then you have a bounce in between this diminished seventh chord and this E7 chord. So the vast majority of pieces you can encounter in classical music can be reduced to a harmonic skeleton. So basically I can just simplify this piece, playing just harmonic skeleton, and this is what you have to be really good at if you really want to sight read well. So sight reading is not about playing the piece in a ready concert version. The first goal of sight reading is just to be able to follow the flow and give it a clear idea of how the piece goes. I have actually created a comprehensive course on this piece for intermediate players because this piece is a very lovely piece to play. It's uh, really sweet and amusing and it's a really great study for intermediate piano players that allows them with the proper instruction, of course, to strengthen quite a few piano playing skills. So if you're quick enough, you can even get this course with some good discount following the link in the description. Of course, nowadays you have a rich choice of options. You can install a fancy app or buy expensive books specifically designed for, for training sight reading skills, and that's great. There's nothing wrong about that. But just don't fall into a trap of motivated consumer who buys equipment instead of actually practicing because you don't actually need any of that. You just need to be exposed to a few strategies, a few tips, which I'm going to share with you now. And you just have to really do it daily. And you can do it with any publicly available, like public domain course you can download from the internet for free. So the first and most important thing is that you have to be very good at recognizing chords and their inversions. That's why I found a tremendous source, a fantastic source for late beginner and intermediate players. This is a website with free PDF sources of organ chorales for organists who play at church services in Germany in German speaking countries. These chorals are amazing for training sight reading skills because they are easy, 
consisting of traditional chords, and most importantly, they are written following very strict rules of polyphony and voice leading used very often, like in the vast majority of cases, used by classical, baroque, romantic, and to a large degree, even modern composers. So even subconsciously, you will learn the expected way to connect chords. Because, for example, in this simple chorale... You will find things like this. And this is a very good example of following uh, polyphony rules for voice leading because if you write something like this, this is incorrect and you see that it sounds kind of weird. This is because we have those parallel fifths and parallel octaves. So this, it's a very rude compositional mistake and if Mozart would compose something like this, even at the age of six years old, his father most probably would like slap him into the face. Then some of these chorales contain wide distances in the left hand, like for example here. This is uh, because originally you are expected to play it with your legs at the organ, so that lower voice is played with your legs on the foot keyboard and with your hands you play just the other three voices, like this. And this is also a great sight reading exercise for intermediate pianists because you can train an ability to reorganize things on the go by taking this uh, tenor voice in your right hand, for example. So instead of this, which is of course wide for most of learners, you can play this, taking that note in the right hand, or for example, just skipping that C, not playing it at all like this. Because skipping something, reducing the texture, is an essential skill of sight reading. The most common application of the sight reading skill in the professional music world, where you don't have time to prepare your pieces to learn them, and where you often don't even know what awaits you on the next rehearsal, is of course collaborative piano. And this occurs when you, as a pianist, accompany other musicians like singers or instrumentalists or play in a short notice gigs with a band or with a choir. So imagine a singer comes to you, gives you a score and tells you let's work on this. The most important for you would be not to play all the notes perfectly but just create that flow, give an idea about the piece, play very clearly the bass and the melody and skip in some things if you find them challenging but most importantly never stop, never, never redo, never return because then the performance uh, with other people turns into a mess. Sight read daily. You don't have to do it much. 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day is sufficient. Just do it regularly because most of people who complain about their sight reading skills lack just one thing, discipline. Before playing, you go through the piece with your eyes very carefully, analyzing the following things. First, time signature. So here we have three eighths, so we count one, two, three, one, two, three. Then, the key in which the piece is written. Here we have one B flat. It means that the piece is written in either D minor or F major. In order to understand it further, more specifically, we look at the last chord of the piece. F major. So this is an F major piece. Hmm. So those are our primarily functions in the piece. And it's really helpful also to uh, specify where you have your tonic, where you have your four, and where you have your fifth degree just in order to know the most principal functions in this particular key before you start sight reading because you will stumble upon these chords quite often through the piece anyway. Why you have to look at the last chord and not at the first chord? Because sometimes a piece can start from afar, like in this Greek example. It starts from this chord, so you can't really say, yeah, you have A major at the end of the bar, but it's an inverted A major, so you can't actually be completely sure the piece is in A major. So you look at the end of it, and when you see that A major chord at the end, you can say, yeah, that's an A major piece. And then you look at the challenging part. So if there are some sharps or flats or some difficult chords or wide things like this one in the... 
you just look with your eyes and you see like, ah, yeah, that's a wide interval. Yeah. I can't play it in one hand. So I will take that C in the right hand or I will just skip that C. So before you play, you plan what you do a little bit. So you are prepared. Then you pick up a moderate tempo, which you can handle and you must stay in it through the whole piece very steadily. Feel free to use metronome if you need. Skipping notes, reducing chords, playing just the melody or just the bass is allowed. So if you read a piece and you have difficulties with a particular chord, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and you can skip something, that's absolutely okay, but then you jump in into the next beat right on time. What is not allowed is stopping, slowing down, accelerating, repeating something when you stop and you start from the beginning of the bar. That's a taboo. You don't do that. You always go straight following beats very precisely. And only after you reach the end of the piece, you should look back at the spots that didn't work well and you play them a couple of times. Don't practice them. Don't try to polish them to make them perfect. Just understand them a tiny bit better, how they are constructed. For example, understanding what you can skip next time when you read through it. And then sight read it again. Give it a second go. The second round of sight reading after you have cleared problematic spots is very important. And this is what helps you to actually master the skill faster. The second mistake uh, after a lack of discipline that people make quite often and that demotivate them quickly is reading stuff that is too difficult for your level. So you really have to start from something very easy, what seems easy to you. So if these chorales are difficult for you, you start by reading just the upper voice, just the melody, or you can download pieces that are even easier. As soon as these chorales, for example, seem easy, when you can play them easily, you progress to pieces by Kulau, Clementi, early Mozart, like early classical style. When these pieces seem familiar and easy to read, you move to early romantic works like some early Schubert, early Chopin and stuff, gradually progressing to later and more harmonically complex works. Uh, what I was doing when I wanted to boost my sight reading as a teenager, I found a few books with piano transcriptions of Haydn symphonies. And luckily those composers, like in classical era, they were composing as many symphonies as Netflix produces shows that nobody likes but everyone watches. <laughs> With Haydn symphonies, it is kind of opposite thing, unfortunately. Everyone kind of likes his symphonies but barely no one listens to them. On the other hand, don't blame yourself if you are not a very good sight reader because you can actually make a brilliant performer's career being a horrible sight reader. Like I, for example, when I was 16 years old, I have already launched my concert career with pieces like Chopin Sonatas, Prokofiev Concerti, which I could play brilliantly. But if you would ask me to sight read a second movement of the Mozart Sonata, I would freak out. And that wouldn't be very good very well, probably. And only after that age, I was so much ashamed of this like a tremendous difference between my pianistic capacity and my sight reading ability that I really started to work on the skill methodically in order to improve it. And still I feel that uh, this skill needs maintenance. So when I sight read on a daily basis for a while, after a couple of weeks I feel like, yeah, I'm getting in the shape, I can play uh, very challenging pieces by just sight reading them and that's a very uh, it's a great feeling actually when you can just crush through the piece, just sight reading it. Of course, that's a great like kind of superpower. But then if I just concentrate on my repertoire pieces, just preparing to concerts and not really sight reading something extra, over time, I feel that this skill kind of stagnates. So I lose the sharpness and uh, quick response, quick reaction. Many of the best performing artists are actually not the best sight readers and many the best sight readers I've seen in my life are actually not very famous artists and those people who have fantastic sight reading abilities and who can play like incredible stuff like reading orchestra scores when you have like not just treble and bass uh, clef but also horn in F and a clarinet in B and you have to transpose all that on the go and <laughs> read through, through that. Um, making your own kind of piano arrangement of the orchestral score and I've seen like crazy things that people do sometimes, uh, are able to do sometimes, but very often those are not famous musicians. Those are just collaborative pianists on some modest position in some or opera theater or in some conservatory, which nobody heard about. And a collaborative piano, 
a field where you need the skill the most is actually a quite challenging, sometimes very stressful job, and unfortunately, very often not recognized enough and very poorly paid. I believe now is an appropriate time to reveal a terrible secret about this channel. A good number of the pieces I have published here were actually me sight-reading them rather than learning them properly. For example, take this beautiful Pasakalia by Buxtehude. One morning I just discovered the piece and spontaneously decided, wow, such beauty, I must record it today. Of course, I never make a recording while sight-reading a piece for the first time. Even if the piece is perfectly readable, I need to play it a few times to assess my subjective response and understand how I feel about it, what kind of specific emotion or idea do I want to convey with this music. Because it's not just about playing the right notes for me, music is about self-exploration and communication. So if you need a motivational kick in the rear to start practicing sight reading more diligently, think about all these beautiful, although not very challenging, pieces that you will be able to enjoy instantly in just a few months if you practice sight reading daily. Thank you for watching this, I hope this was helpful. If you are interested in my detailed in-depth courses on this Greek piece, check out the link in the description.